Right, so I don't know how good the audio is going to be in this video because my mic broke. <laughs> so I have a new mic uh, and I'm, I'm dealing with that. On, not a new mic, I currently have no mic. So I'm just using the camera's um, audio, um, the inbuilt mic on the camera, which I don't know how good that is yet. I won't know how good that is until I come to edit. So, uh, yeah, I'll, but anyway, today's video, uh, we're going to be catching up with the amazing Spider-Man. So a lot's happened in uh, the pages of The Amazing Spider-Man since I, I, um, since I got, you know, backtracked with it. And it starts with the end of the, um, the Doctor Doom arc. Yes, I was that far behind. I was at, like, episode, like issue 32, issue 33, um, Around that point, I think it was issue 36 actually that I started with with this and then I read up to issue 50 and that's the bulk that I'm going to be talking about. So that's a lot of books and there's actually like three arcs, um, almost four because there's the end of there's the end of one arc and the beginning of the newest arc. Um, but that um, that Doctor Doom arc, the 2099 one. I, I, I don't know what I think of it. I don't think I like it. Uh, I like the artwork. I think the artwork was beautiful, but everything else kind of felt flat. And I think it's because they tried to make it too big. They tried to. They tried to like. Oh yeah, we're gonna have. Um, it, the story never really had anything to do with. Um, to do with Spider-Man, it's just like this war between two countries, um, Latveria and another one that I forget the name of, um, and it's and Spidey's just caught in the middle of it. Uh, there's there's no real reason for him to be involved in this story, and it just feels too big for a Spider-Man story. And it feels like they're trying. It, like Nick Spencer was trying too hard to make an epic, that it just fell flat on its face. Uh, we then have um, this story to do with Chance, who is an old, like deep dive villain from like way back in the day, and he's set up this kind of like super villain casino where they where they can bet on like how they think fights are going to turn out and they have like they have like choices between hero versus hero hero versus themselves hero versus or like the illustrious um the rare hero versus villain which never happens now uh, i like i like that line because it never happens now we have so many heroes versus heroes that like a hero fighting a villain is nearly unheard of now, but and they they're actually showing like fights that are going on in other books, which I thought was a pretty uh, a pretty nice touch. I thought that was pretty cool um, that they were actually referencing what was going on in Immortal Hulk, what was going on in the Avengers at that point, and everything in between. And so we have the the foreigner. Um, come into this, and he's like, "I'm, I'm going to bet that you, I, I bet you, um, a, a couple million uh, dollars that you can't take one of Spider-Man's web slingers, or web swingers, um, or web shooters." And so Chance and Spider-Man have a fight. This is all in between. Uh, some stuff with J. Jonah Jameson, which I don't think is that important. I don't think it's that cool. Um, uh, but yeah, 
I do like that they're setting up for this like kind of this kind of butting heads between Jonah and and Spider-Man and that they're actually going to like go back to the old status quo even though Jonah now knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man and he's trying to do everything in his power to make the world see that um, that Spider-Man is a good guy now instead of, uh, as a juxtaposition of what he was doing before where he's trying to make the world think that Spider-Man is a, a villain and a menace and I think that's kind of cool and I like what they're doing there I like that Dan Slott tried to make that a big thing but ultimately like it fell flat on its face but now I really I really like what Nick Spence is doing with that dynamic and like the actual like bromance between Peter Parker and J. Jonah Jameson that's kind of like spawning out of it. Uh, we then have a storyline with uh, with Gog, which also ties in with Boomerang, and I think I think that was probably and that was probably the turning point where I was like, Nick Spencer can fucking write. <laughs> Nick Spencer can fucking write, and I've never I never thought that Gog of all characters was going to was going to have like a book that would make me almost cry. I I, I almost shed a tear like when they were going through like the story of Gog and how he got back to like the 616 universe like just that that whole that whole thing was very very well done um to, to the point where I think this may be like this may be bringing Amazing Spider-Man to be one of the best books coming out at Marvel at the moment and then we have the Sinia storyline, and it's finally getting, and we finally get the reveal of who Kindred is. I'm going to wait till the end to actually spoil that and to tell you who that is, but I will give a spoiler warning right now, because what happens in the whole Sinia arc? Oh boy, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's... It's very good, and it's exactly what I want every Marvel comic to be. I want it all to make me feel the way that Amazing Spider-Man is making me feel at the moment. Because at the when I finished reading issue 50, I literally went, "Fuck! <laughs> Holy crap!" But this, this is probably the coolest, the coolest thing I've ever like. This is probably the best. Marvel Comics has been in a while. This is honestly better than better than Donny Cates' first arc on Venom. It's better than um, a lot of stuff that I've that I've read like from Marvel in a long, long time. I, I honestly, I I mean that honestly. The Cine arc and then the first issue of The Last Remains. I think is some of the best Marvel writing ever. <laughs> I, I, I think it's possibly, it's definitely Nick Spencer at his best. And it's, it's probably like the quintessential Marvel and it's the best Spider-Man that I've read in a very long time. But like, essentially what happens is Kindred, who is this big bad who has been built up since issue one, and now he's like finally coming to the forefront and they're building up to the big fight with him and like <laughs> he's resurrected the Sin Eater who was the the big bad that killed Gene DeWolf and killed like a lot of other people he's basically a serial killer he's got no actual powers but he's like toted as like the most frightening the most frightening villain that uh, Spider-Man's ever fought because he actually like because he's just a guy with a gun who goes around killing people and um, he's also the villain that led into the creation of Venom and and all that stuff but but eventually like this uh, like the whole um, the whole storyline to do with him is he's been brought back and now every person that he kills he can um he takes their powers so 
he's he's hunting like this um, overdrive. He's hunting overdrive, and um, who's basically a D-list Spider-Man villain. Uh, he's um, he kills him in front of Spider-Man uh, and takes his powers, and then he moves on to the Lethal Legion and takes the powers of the Lethal Legion. So we've got um, Whirlwind, I think Living Laser, um, Doctor Nefaria, and some others, and like another one that I have forgotten the name of. I can't remember who the fourth member of the Lethal Legion was, but there was a fourth member of the Lethal Legion, and like, and like he has the powers of him as well. And then he he's like moving on, and he's and he's the next target that he has to kill is Norman Osborn. And Norman Osborn now cured of his like of his whole psychosis after the after the event after the last issue of uh, Slots Run, uh, where he was he was basically he basically thought he was Cletus Cassidy, and he was basically acting like Cletus Cassidy. But now he's back to being Norman Osborn. He now runs the Ravencroft Institute. Which is basically Marvel's version of, version of Arkham Asylum, and he's he's like governing this whole this whole place, and then the Sin Eater, along with this army of other like of other like Sin Eaters, that he, he gives his powers as well. Um, Storm Ravencroft, and all throughout this arc, we're shown that there's there's something in like the deep vaults of the Ravencroft Institute. And that thing is the Juggernaut, and Sin Eater just shoots Juggernaut in the chest, takes his powers, and then becomes this like Sin Juggernaut thing. Um, and so that forces that forces Spider-Man, who throughout this is like talking to all the mem other members of the Spider Family, like Miles, Gwen, um, even Madam Web comes in. And and they're all like, you should you should just let him kill Norman Osborn, because Norman Osborn will kill again, and you should just you should just let him uh, kill Norman. And then Gwen is like, it's at the end of the day, it's up to you. I know you're going to do the right thing. I know you're going to probably save Norman, but at the end of the day, who am I to tell you what to do? So Spidey goes in, and then rescues Norman and Norman then takes the goblin formula and turns into the green goblin and we get this um, we get this quite quite awesome um, Spider-Man and Green Goblin team up and and so like they work together to face this like sin juggernaut um, eventually they they get out and the rest of the spider family join them and Norman starts being like a creep to Gwen like I remember the nights we had together when I when I was inside you and other creepy stuff and like and then spider-man eventually just picks Norman and chucks him out of the vehicle that they're in leaving him for the sin juggernaut and then like the Sin Eater is just is just like a normal guy again. It isn't explained how he like how he lost all the powers of the Juggernaut. I, I suppose he suppressed them. I suppose he can like control that. But if so, why was he running after them as a big lumbering like oaf? I uh, I don't know. But eventually he does shoot Norman Osborn and then like Kindred comes out and the Sin Eater obviously expected to get a reward and his reward is obviously being killed <laughs> again and sent to hell um, and then Kindred like I think he possesses all of the other members of the Spider family and they're chasing Spider-Man all the way through New York and um, Spider-Man ends up on the on the uh, doorstep of 
Stephen Strange who ends up fe uh, who ends up healing him to full health, and then we and then um, Norman get uh, Norman like is resurrected. He awakens and he's like, so what? What the Sin Eater does is everyone that he kills gets resurrected and um, is like is like a perfect human being. They're like, I just want to repent for my sins. And Norman Osborn is like, look, the Sin Eater was bad, but what's coming after is worse. And and, uh, and the the um, police that show up to arrest him, to arrest Norman, is like, are like, what could be worse than the Sin Eater? And uh, uh, how do you know? Um, and they're like, he's worse because he doesn't need to be stopped, he needs to be helped, and he needs help. And they're like, what, oh, why? Why, how do you know that he needs help? And they're like, because he's my son. That's right. <laughs> Kindred. Kindred is, is fucking Harry Osborn, of all, of all people. And I know we were all saying this from the start, we are all like, yeah, Kindred's gonna be Norman, uh, gonna be Harry Osborn. It it was pretty obvious. It was laid bare, but then there was some things that made us think, well, what if it's a woman? What if what if it's like uh, Carly Cooper or something? But it can't be Carly Cooper because she's still alive. So it has to be Harry Osborn. And um, knowing Nick Spencer, there will be more twists and there will be more turns going forward. But just that reveal. And then, like, we see Kindred in, like, this graveyard, and he's digging out the bodies of the Stacy family. Like, he's got George Stacy's body, he's got Gwen Stacy, and then he's, like, he's, like, arranging them at a dinner table, and he's, like, well, what... <laughs> well, what's better, what's better than a, a meal with everyone you love? And it's, it's really morbid, and it, it, it's really fun as well. I, I love Spider-Man at the moment. I'm loving this book. It's, it's my favourite thing coming out of Marvel. And that compared to my last Spider-Man video, where I was like, I was like, I was like listing things, everything that was wrong with this book, and now I can't stop singing its praises. That just shows like how that just shows like why I love comic books. Because like you can get to a point like with me I usually save it till like the third issue before I before I decide I'm gonna stick with this book or I'm gonna get rid of this book. Um, and by issue three of this I was I was really skeptical, but I decided to give it a chance. And boy am I glad I gave it a chance because this kindred storyline has really paid off. It was being, it was being like, it was being teased for a really long time, and there was a lot of, a lot of stuff in the background that I was, that I was like, man, this is, this is like, every time that I see him, he's becoming less and less interesting. But now that he's like being given more of a spotlight, and now it's coming to the point where there's going to be some payoff. To all of the build-up that we've been getting, that that really is that really is like fucking worth it for me, and like this whole this whole like almost two year long storyline finally get uh, finally coming to a head, and it's not a big massive event. I mean, it it kind of is, but it's not going to be as big and massive as like other events have been. It's not going to be like Secret Empire where there's or War of Realms where there's like there's like thirty times and all of them you must read. Here you've got like the main five issues and then you've got like a few point one issues as well, which are optional. But I'm going to read them anyway because they're they're literally the Amazing Spider-Man issue fifty point one and like it's not an outside. It's not an outside book. It's not like a different book that it's gonna be in. It's like it's tying in directly to the storyline. 
it's going to be like it's going to be running parallel to it, but it's going to be like a direct tie-in to the story. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm going on about, but I just like when when events aren't like company-wide events. I like it when it's like a character-centric event and it's only involving like the characters that are involved. And this is even better because yes, Miles is involved. But it's not tying into Miles' book. Miles is still doing what he's doing over in the Miles Morales book. Which maybe doesn't make sense because he's currently possessed by Kindred at the moment. But, you know, people that are reading the Miles book and not reading Amazing Spider-Man. Although you should be reading Amazing Spider-Man because it lives up to the name. For, like, the first time in 12 years. <laughs> we're actually getting a good Spider-Man, but that that's behind the point. Um, people that are reading that book that aren't reading this book don't need to read this book to understand what's going on in that book. They've still got their Miles Morales story going on over there. And the people that aren't reading Miles Morales but are reading this don't need to then jump into Miles Morales on issue, like, 23 and, and like just read the tie-in that may or may not be important so they've just spent money and they might end up wasting like wasting money on a tie-in that's not important to the overall plot if you get what i mean but amazing spider-man is definitely on the way up and it's definitely like getting to the point where i could i could easily say this is the best thing coming out of marvel at the moment, and it's Spider-Man. It should be. <laughs> this is their most popular character. He's the third most popular superhero behind Superman and Batman, and like, it should be the best thing coming out of Marvel. And the fact that it hasn't been for so long, and now it's finally getting to a point where it it's in contention to be. And it, Nick Spencer is a is a uh, fucking glow up artist, isn't he? He's not artist, but writer. He's he's had a fucking glow up in in the past like two years of writing Spider Man. Like compare this to what he was doing with Captain America, night and day. Like this is fun. This is funny. This is like dark, morbid. It's got everything. It's kind of got a horror tinge to it. Like there's there's everything in this book. And it pleases everyone. And like, I don't, I don't think there's a single person that wouldn't get something out of this. I think, I think it's, I think it's honestly like the best Spider-Man story that we've had in 12 years. It's like, it may be the best Spider-Man story we've had since like Ultimate Spider-Man, since the death of the death of Ultimate Spider-Man. Like, I, I don't count the Miles Morales stuff because that's a different character. This is the best Peter Parker story that we've had since Ultimate Spider-Man. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.